the DRCN is about to celebrate 100 years, 2016. And who was the president? Cecilia Anem, a Ghanaian from Africa. And I did an interview with the BBC, and they said, a midwife from a fishing village in Ghana to become president of the Royal College of Nursing. I remember one student is telling me, I will get where you have got to Cecilia. Anyone there stop me. And that's the spirit I want to see. Dr. Cecilia Eni made history after becoming the first black African president of the Royal College of Nursing from 2014 to 2018. Throughout her illustrious career, she has received several accolades, including the prestigious CBE in 2017, in recognition of her contributions to women's health as a clinical nurse specialist. Racism is there. Sometimes they do it overtly. You don't even think they are discriminating or they are being racist against you. But when you are faced with that, challenges, what are you going to do with all these clothes you are buy buying? Because the perception is possibly we just swing from one tree to the other, so we don't need clothes. Be who you want to be, not what they want you to be. Hello guys, welcome to today's episode on your favorite podcast. Today is the biggest day of my life, even being honest, and I'm privileged to be sitting with the former RCN president, proud Ghanaian, and I would allow her to introduce herself. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Dr. Cecilia Anim. I'm a Ghanaian by birth. I'm a nurse working from Ghana since 1968 as a midwife, and then came to the UK, continued my nursing training, working in the NHS for over 40 years, and recently retired. I'll go straight to the point. Mm -hmm. When you started your nursing career, mm -hmm. did you see yourself rise to this level that you, you've been and you're still on? Um, no, actually, because I started off in Ghana I, as a midwife, and then I worked for three years. And then when I came to the UK, I knew that there are opportunities that you can build on. And though there were a lot of barriers and pitfalls, but I was determined to make the best out of my life. And I always say that this is the only life you've got, make the use of it. So, the history that you made to, mm -hmm. as the first black woman to mm -hmm. be the, the, the president of the RCN. In a hundred years. In a hundred years. Yes. <laughs> now, would you say that is something you saw coming based on the trajectory that your nursing career was going on? I think I didn't see it coming face to face. Yeah, when I started off as a steward, mm -hmm. Then as a as an, uh, learn, um, health and safety rep in the workplace, a steward representing my members, a branch chair, branch secretary, working with other trade unions and supporting my members. That was my main focus. Then until I became chair of the branch and I started attending Congress and I realized that there are other opportunities within the college that I can excel myself to. Hmm. So when the opportunity came to stand for council, I did, and I didn't get it. And it was that anger. Why didn't I get it? I should have got it. I've worked so hard in the branch. Then the deputy president came up, and I applied. And I think if you believe in God, he has a plan for you. Maybe if I have got the council election, I wouldn't have gone for the deputy president. So I went for the deputy president. I did two terms, that's four years. And then the president became vacant. And I said, I'll go for that as well. So I went for that. And during my first term as president, it was when we realized that the RCN is about to celebrate 100 years, 2016. Wow. And who was the president? Yeah. Cecilia Anem, <laughs> a Ghanaian from Africa. Yeah. And I did an interview with the BBC, and they said, a midwife from a fishing village in Ghana to become president of the Royal College of Nursing. 
It, it is a huge inspiration. It is a huge, and it's history. It will never be erased. I mean, it's it's mind blowing because I learned about it quite recently, yeah. and I was like, "Wow, yes. I, I didn't know about this." Yes. Now, comparing your generation of nurses to mm -hmm. this generation of nurses, mm -hmm. would you say there is some sort of disparity between these generations? I think the younger ones now are not going to take the nonsense we took. We were not, you know, we were not. Outspoken enough, we were not challenging enough, but the younger ones will challenge. If you look at what is happening in universities at the moment with all the world problems, you know, these are the next generation and they are setting the, their aims very high and they are determined to get to that. And I remember one student is telling me, I will get where you have got to Cecilia Anyone dare stop me, and that's the spirit I want to see. Wow, that is a bold statement. Yes, he said, anyone dare stop me. Yeah, that is the spirit I, I, I want to see. There is always that issue of quote-unquote racism mm -hmm. being popular mm -hmm. and being a hindrance to people progressing. Yeah. Did you experience that, and how do you overcome it? And what advice would you give to someone going through that? Racism is there. Sometimes they do it overtly. You don't even think they are discriminating or they are being racist against you. But when you are faced with that, challenge it, call it out. You need to call it out and say, I am not happy with what you're doing. You better stop. And if there are channels also that you can go through to report it. But sometimes the perpetrators don't even know they are being racist making a racist remark, even about the way you dress and things like that. They think they are just casting a joke or something. Yeah. But you have to make sure that, look, this is unacceptable. I used to go to work and people would come to me and say, so what did you have for breakfast? I said, well, who, who, who wants to know? <laughs> 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 what are you going to do with all these clothes you are buy buying? Because the perception is possibly we just swing from one tree to the other, so we don't need clothes. Yeah, it's sad to think that people still think that. They still think that way. And they make these remarks. They don't see how hurtful it is. Sometimes you laugh about it through ignorance. But if you call it out, they back off. You know, I, I always say, don't take it. Don't go home and cry into your pillow. Challenge them. Your final words for any nurse aspiring to be where you are and mm -hmm. even beyond? My final words would be, if you know where you're going and you have packed your suitcase, don't let anyone stop you. Be who you want to be, not what they want you to be. Be who you want, want to, to be, be. Not, not what, what they, they want, want you, you to be. be. And that is how we end today's conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anim. It's Thank it's you. a huge privilege for us to have you on our podcast. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity for us to share this with all the African nurses, all the minority and ethnic, yes. and, and ethnic nurses yes. to know that mm -hmm. they can do it. They can push themselves to that limit. They can do if it. someone has done it, then there is that footprint that yes. you can follow to be able yes. to get there. And the glass what, ceiling is broken. Yeah, it, it's it, it is broken. It's to climb out to it, through yeah. it. Yeah, it is it's broken. broken. And we want to thank you so much for that. My pleasure. Anytime.